Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I can see lots of people logging in, connecting to the session this afternoon. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay. Some familiar, some familiar faces and names. It's really nice to see you all. <laughs> Okay, we've got, okay, so everyone's in that's been in the waiting room now. Thank you for waiting, everyone. Appreciate that. I see a few familiar faces myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I guess we're pretty good to go. We've got no more in the waiting room, so we can start. And I'll just keep admitting people as we go, more that pop on in. Okay. okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so very, very much uh, for joining the second of our latest series of information sessions. Um, whether you're in lockdown, as we are here in um, Greater Sydney and New South Wales, uh, or perhaps in Victoria, or whether you're just taking it a little quieter at home through these, um, the last of the winter weeks, uh, welcome uh, to one and all. We're delighted to have people joining us from um, as far uh, afield as um, far north Queensland, uh, throughout um, metropolitan um, Sydney and um, the regions of New South Wales, across Victoria, South Australia, and even Western Australia today. So wonderful to have you all here with us. Uh, and again, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, um, my name is Meg Hill. I'm the Managing Director of Cruise Express uh, and delighted to be hosting today's session. Uh, before we get started, just a few little brief housekeeping notes. First of all, we have placed everybody on mute except for those of us that will be um, talking throughout the presentation. Uh, if anybody has questions, we encourage you to, to ask away. Uh, that's one of the main reasons for, um, for being online today. And you should all notice that at the bottom of your screen, there is a chat icon. Yeah. If you click on that icon, it opens up a little um, message box. You can post your question there. And um, Kathy, who's um, managing all of the tech support today, will be keeping a track of those questions. And towards the end of the presentation, we'll open up to question time. So there will be the opportunity uh, for us to run through those questions for you. Uh, the other thing is that we will actually be recording the session today, and that's because we have had some people contact us to let us know that they unfortunately weren't able to join us at this particular time slot, so it will give us the chance to share the link with them later and they'll be able to watch the recording in their own time. Uh, we will also share it with all of you uh, so that you can go back and watch information if you wish to at a later date uh, or share it with your family or friends. Um, so, with the recent talk uh, very much in the uh, news headlines um, of us needing to reach 70 and 80% vaccination uh, rates um, before we really know what life uh, is going to look like in Australia longer term, uh, it was particularly interesting, I thought, and, and exciting for us too, to see that Qantas has made an announcement today that they are expecting to be returning to service on various international routes, um, uh, perhaps as early as mid-December. And that will not necessarily be just to New Zealand as we've seen uh, in recent months, but also to other parts of the world, such as the United States, uh, to Singapore, um, to the UK uh, and other um, well-known destinations, all of which happen to be um, parts of the world that um, Princess Cruises travels to. So I think it's very, very relevant that um, our session today is with Princess. Um, and uh, it, it's a brand obviously that's very uh, well known in the Australian market. Uh, many of the people who are joining us today are um, faithful Princess um, Cruises. 
Um, I think we have quite a number of people that are either Platinum or Elite Captain Circle members, so uh, welcome to you. Um, having said that, we also have people that perhaps have not ever cruised with Princess before, so it's lovely to see you joining us today as well. Uh, and I think uh, we're all in for a, an interesting um, discussion today. So um, I'm delighted to welcome our, our very special uh, guest, David Craven, who's our um, uh, key account manager. Effectively, he's our uh, closest partner in the Princess um, family. Um, David joins us from Brisbane today uh, and we welcome him. Um, I thought we might start, David, with just a little bit of background because you have quite a long history, uh, personal history um, with Princess, don't you? Yeah, so I've been in this role uh, for about, four, well, just approaching four years now, and that's part of the Shoreside team. But prior to that, I used to work on board as a Deputy Cruise Director for about four and a half years. So um, very, very fond of the brand and it enabled me to travel this beautiful world and actually met my wife working on board. So uh I've definitely got a soft spot for Princess. Definitely. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, so do we here at Kids Express. Uh, we have a very um, long and close relationship with with uh, Princess Cruises. Uh, and um, not only do many of our clients travel on an individual basis, but over the years we've we've hosted a lot of groups on board Princess. Um, to destinations such as the Mediterranean, uh, to Japan, and in even uh, in in more recent times, uh, on our um, very very popular heritage rail and sail journeys with the coastal um, voyages between Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. So. Um, as I say, a very, very soft spot for Princess. Uh, I think one of the wonderful things is that um, it feels like um, coming home, uh, stepping on board a Princess ship and, and the service on board, you know, the staff are always just so very, very welcoming, which is, which is um, absolutely wonderful. Very passionate crew, definitely. Yes, yeah, for sure. So um, I guess, David, we're coming up to about 18 months now uh, since Princess um, was able to cruise uh, in Australian waters. Um, and, you know, some people might have thought that you've taken that time to have a bit of a, a break and a holiday yourself, but not so. I think, um, you know, Princess has been very, very busy behind the scenes and perhaps um, you can give us a little bit of an insight into that. Um, I know one of the, the um, very exciting developments that you've been working on uh, is medallion class. And um, I'm not sure whether people would have heard the term or not, but um, over to you in terms of letting us know what... Uh, what medallion classes is all about? Yeah, so it has uh, it has been a very very busy eighteen months. Um, we've had a few obstacles to overcome. We needed to get our crew uh, to, to um, back to their home, whether that be Manila in the UK, here, there, and everywhere. Which that was a, a global task, but uh, it was great to reunite all our crew with their loved ones. And then obviously our shoreside team, we've worked feverishly to make sure. The people have been refunded, they've got their future cruise credits and all those kind of things as we prepare to get back to business. But also, like you say correctly, we also made the announcement that all of our ships will be Ocean Medallion class enabled prior to the resumption of service. So what does that mean? Uh, the medallion, the long and short of it, is just this little disc. So I'll hold it up to the camera there, it's very small. Um, and that replaces your cruise card, okay? So it actually comes with this lanyard, so it actually comes like this. It'll also come personalised, so it'll come engraved with your name, the ship and sailing date. And it's also colour coordinated based on your tier in the Captain Circle programme. Okay? So they're actually a nice little memento, you get to keep it at the end of your cruise. And what this does, it empowers our crew to deliver the finest service at sea. That's what the whole idea of Medallion is, to make sure that our crew are looking after you the best possible way we can. So the Medallion all starts uh, with downloading the Medallion Class app. So if you go to uh, Google Play or the Apple Store, you can download the app there and it's free of charge. So there's no cost for this. When we first released the Medallion uh, Class experience, you needed to download all these multiple different kind of apps and software and all this stuff. No longer do you need to do that. Nice and easy. Just head to the uh, relevant store, download the app, and that is all you need. It is then your gateway into experiencing the finest service and the finest cruise experience at sea. So what the medallion does, um, it has a number of different features designed to make sure that you're having the best time on board. So for instance, 
Um, when you come on board, as you approach your cabin door, it just simply unlocks. Um, so no more times you need to get your key card out. It's been demagnetized or something like that. It just unlocks and you can get straight into your cabin, which is nice and easy. Utilizing the app, you can also find your fellow travel partners. So if you're traveling with uh, your wife or friends, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, no longer do you need to try and find each other with smoke signals and radio and all that kind of stuff. Just simply uh, utilize the app on your phone or you can utilize the portal throughout the ship. Tap your medallion on the portal, say, where is my wife? It'll give you the location. It will actually um, let you know the best way to uh, reconnect each other as well. So it's just a really nice way to make sure you're better connected with your fellow travel partners. What it also does is let you find your cabin and um, it lets you find the different venues on board. Um, anyone who's been on a cruise will know that the embarkation day is slightly amusing because you will see many people traipsing around the ship trying to find their cabin. They've gone up and down and up and down. Those days are far behind us now. Simply click on where's my cabin and it'll uh, navigate you there. My personal favorite feature of this is Ocean Now. So imagine the scenario, we're upstairs by the pool. It's a beautiful sunny day. We're sailing through the gorgeous waters of uh, tropical Queensland. It's really hot, so I want a drink. Order it, we bring it to you. If you want some food, order it, we'll bring it to you. If you want something in your cabin, order it, we'll take it to your cabin. You know, you had too many drinks the night before, you need some Panadol or something like that, order it, we'll bring it to you. Let you focus on your cruise. We want you to make sure you're having the best possible experience on board and let our crew look after you. That's what it's all about, this uh, medallion class experience. But it also um, has taken a few of the stress points out. Again, if you've been on a cruise before the day of embarkation, can be a bit of an arduous process. It can take an hour and a half sometimes to get on board the ship and all the rest of it. Again, that is completely done, uh, completely gone. By becoming ocean ready, the embarkation process takes anywhere between seven and 12 minutes. Mm. So on average, it's 10 minutes. And that's 10 minutes arriving at the cruise terminal with your luggage to being poolside with a drink in your hand. So it's all about expediting that entire um, embarkation process to get your holiday started sooner. And um, what it also allows you to do is not have to sit for an hour and a half listening to the muster drill. Um, you know, obviously on the day of embarkation, we need to make sure you know where you need to go in the highly unlikely event of an emergency. Now, normally you'd have to sit in one of our mustard stations and sit for an hour and a half and blah, 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 blah. Don't need to do that anymore. Just literally watch a video in your stateroom and that's it. All we ask is that you go via your mustard station so that you know where you need to go. Because you have the medallion on you, it simply ticks you off and that's it. So it's all about getting on board, starting your holiday as quickly as possible and making sure you're making the most of your time on board our ships. Now, quite often we get the question, I don't know if I've got a smartphone. I don't have a smartphone. I don't know how to use the app, all these different kind of things. A couple of points with this. Firstly, most phones are smartphones. It's just a, a, a name that's used. Uh, to describe a mobile device that has apps. So if you have a phone which allows you to kind of access Facebook or access your emails and different things like that, you have a smartphone. So all you need to do is download the application right there. If you don't have a smartphone or you don't have a tablet or anything like that, you don't have to use it. That's absolutely fine. Like I said, we've got well over 100 portals located throughout the ship, so you can still utilize all of these awesome functions. It's all there, it's not designed to be um, difficult to use or technologically advanced and all that kind of stuff. It's designed to be really user friendly and designed to make sure that you're having the best time on board and make sure that we're offering the best service and best experience. Mm. It's interesting, David, because um, a lot of the, the enhancements that this will bring to our um, our experiences on board actually go hand in hand with being COVID safe. You know, when you're talking about not having to all gather as a, as a very large group of people in a room to, to um, complete the muster drill, you know, perfect example of, of, you know, that being very COVID safe in terms of people being able to take their time and, and, um, and do the muster drill in the privacy and, and, you know, sort of at, the, at a time that suits them 
in their own cabin. So it's interesting that these things are, are aligning beautifully in these COVID times. Of course. So when we first developed this technology, obviously nobody knew that this pandem that pandemic was going to arise. Mm. Um, but obviously once it kind of took the world as the way it did, we realised we've got this incredible tool in our armoury to make sure that we can provide a nice social distancing experience. Uh, we can heighten our sanitizing, uh, sanitization on board. What's really cool as well, utilizing this um, medallion class app, you can actually look in a venue to see how many people are in there. Mm -hmm. So if you're upstairs by the pool, listening to the band or watching movies under the stars or something like that, you know the theater shows in about half an hour, you can literally see how many people are in that venue at that time. If it's packed, stay where you are. Have a look and see what else is going on around the ship. There's always plenty going on. And um, so again, all these different kind of things are really helpful um, in this new COVID world. Everything is contactless, you know, purchasing, even drinks. You don't need to get up and move or anything like that. We bring everything to you. Uh, so not only does it deliver a wonderful, seamless experience on board, but it also helps make sure that everyone's kind of uh, COVID safe as well on board. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And, and it, it does lead me to, um, to that um, potential elephant in the room, I suppose, uh, in terms of what cruising will look like um, when we finally are able to step, step back on board a princess ship. I know that you have already had um, cruise restarts in other parts of the world. Um, and of course, you know, what we're seeing even here in Australia from day to day, you know, rules and regulations are changing. But can you give us some idea of, of perhaps what, what cruising currently looks like in other parts of the world and what, you know, what we should expect um, here when cruising resumes um, or, or how we will get to know what those protocols might be? Yeah, so I mean, it's very interesting looking at the resumption of service elsewhere in the world because it it really is very, very different on a number of fronts. So, for instance, occupancy limits. Um, some countries are enforcing an occupancy limit, so they're not permitting the cruise ship to be filled to maximum capacity. So at the moment in Singapore, it's 25 percent. In Taiwan, they've paused cruising, but that's 33 uh, percent. In Japan, they've paused cruising, but it's 50 percent. In the UK, it's 80%. On some departures, it's 50%. In America, it's 100%, but there are rules around it. So you can see that every single government is approaching this completely different. And that's basically making this uh, very, very tricky um, to kind of get that resumption of service happening because um, everyone's kind of taking a different approach. So the resumption of service in uh, the US, so obviously the Caribbean is uh, the number one cruising destination on Earth. We're back, cruising back in the Caribbean. And uh, hopefully some of you saw that we started cruising back in Alaska, which is very, very exciting. We love Alaska. Um, now, those two states have taken a different approach to cruising again. So a question that I get asked an awful lot is about vaccines. Will we need a vaccine to come on board? Um, are vaccines required? So on and so forth. Now, quite often people say, will Princess ask for a vaccine? The thing to bear in mind is all of this is coming from governments, okay? Mm -hmm. Our number one rule, our number one rule and our number one aim is compliance and the health and safety and well-being of all of our passengers, crew, and all of those people in the destinations that we visit. That's our number one thing. And um, it's all about working with local legislation. So vaccines, for instance, let's have a look at the US. The US um, is a very interesting uh, destination in terms of vaccines. So the federal government announced that uh, for a cruise ship to cruise from the US, 95% uh, of all of those people on board above the age of 18, so that's crew and guests, 95% um, all have to be vaccinated, okay? Not long after that announcement was made, Florida and Texas then came out and passed a state law saying that you cannot ask anyone for a vaccine regardless of what it is. So for cruising, for restaurants, doesn't matter. Vaccine passports are not permitted. So they're mm -hmm. literally kind of competing with each other. Mm -hmm. So even within the same country, there's different rules and regulations about it. So when we look closer to home, it's a very, very difficult question. So a good example, again, is New Zealand. Um, they've only rolled out the Pfizer vaccine, whereas here in Australia, a lot of our passengers um, have taken the AstraZeneca vaccine. Mm -hmm. So will those with the AstraZeneca be permitted into New Zealand? So these are all the questions and all the things that we're working so hard with local government 
um, to actually overcome and actually get a return to service map. But just by giving those examples, you can see how difficult it is um, to get clarity on, um, on how we can resume service safely uh, when the time is right. But uh, we are definitely hoping uh, over the coming weeks to have some form of return to service map from the government and um, some targets and guidelines so we can get to get back to cruising pretty soon. So some of you may be aware that we made some changes to local deployment for our forthcoming season. So uh, we actually absorbed all of our Emerald Princess departures into the Royal Princess. And we also changed any South Pacific cruise and Papua New Guinea cruises uh, to local cruises, so cruising in either Australia or New Zealand. We wouldn't have done that if we are not confident that we will be cruising by the end of December, going into early next year. Mm -hmm. um, what that takes for us logistically to move those bookings, to secure those berthings, to do all of that work, we wouldn't do it if we weren't confident that we are coming to the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and what's nice to know is that that light at the end of the tunnel isn't another train coming the other way. <laughs> so we are definitely coming towards the point where we can get back on the beautiful oceans and get back yeah. cruising. Um, but obviously we are completely at the behest of, of government and authorities, but we are working so hard to get that happening. You know, it, it does, um, I agree, feel as if we are getting so much closer to that uh, resumption of cruise date. Um, and whenever it might be, let's hope it is um, mid to late December, whenever it might be, I think it's going to be, um, you know, a, 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 a momentous day for many Australians who have been waiting for this for such a long time. hundred um, percent, I mean. Won't it be amazing to see that first ship come through, you know, into Port Phillip Bay or it, through, the, through the heads in Sydney or up the river in Brisbane um, or into Fremantle? You know, it will be amazing to see the ships return. It's I gonna be, it's a, I, I think there'll be a few tears. Mm. I'm not going to lie. Tears of joy. Um, I will definitely be on the first ship that I'm allowed on um, based here in Brisbane. Obviously, we've got this brand new, beautiful cruise terminal here yeah, in Brisbane, yeah. uh, which was finished September last year. So can't wait to actually get on board a ship. And but like I say, we wouldn't have taken those measures without us genuinely believing that we can actually get some resum resumption of service happening soon so uh, watch this space obviously as soon as we are aware we'll share immediately with fantastic so let's talk about destinations we've talked about what cruising is likely to look like in those early days when the ships are first allowed back into Australian waters you know it's all going to be about Definitely. coastal cruising and, 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 and traveling very close to home but um, perhaps perhaps we can we can look at a little further down the line than that um, at what sort of cruising uh, will be a, will be available to people particularly those uh, I know many princess guests like the idea of getting on board and and, and staying on board for you know three four um, six weeks and in some cases I mean the world cruise has been incredibly incredibly popular hasn't it leaving Sydney and, and returning to Sydney or out of Brisbane back to Brisbane so can we talk to um, you know the sorts of cruise opportunities people would have um, looking well into 2022 and and of course you also have 2023 sailings on uh, uh, available for people to book don't you that's right so i mean closer to home we launched our 22 23 program back in march um, and it's been booking very very strongly so um i think we're around 12 departures are already sold out and um, so it's selling really 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 well um, i suppose and you'll know this Meg as well normally this time of the year we've got this forthcoming season which people are booking on they've got another season domestically that they can book on but then they can book international departures in between whereas mm -hmm. with the uncertainty about international travel and things like that people are kind of looking just simply to be booking that closer to home departures so if you are looking to be booking um you know a Tasmania cruise a Fiji cruise or whatever it is it is really important that we're booking now not waiting for that resumption of service date because what we've seen elsewhere in the world, as soon as that pent up demand is released, um, inventory goes very, very quickly. Mm. Um, but with that in mind, especially looking at international departures, um, there is still, I suppose, a bit of uncertainty around 2022 for the Northern Hemisphere. So what we're doing, we are launching 2023. Um, so we've recently announced our European itineraries for 23, our Alaskan itineraries for 23. Uh, we are also launching our Japan itineraries 
at the very start and end, well, end of August and the 1st of September on general sale. And then towards the end of the year, we'll be launching 2023 for places like uh, the Caribbean, for Panama Canal, for Antarctica, and for many more of those more exotic destinations. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we are looking close to home, there is so much opportunity, uh, regardless of where uh, your nearest port is. So we've got opportunities from Fremantle, from Melbourne, from Adelaide, from Brisbane, from Auckland. And of course, our main hub, we've got lots of different departures from Sydney. And it depends on how long you've got. If you just want to do a short cruise, we've got some really beautiful short itineraries to get down to one of my favourite parts of Australia, which is Tasmania. I absolutely adore it down there. It's just so mm -hmm. picturesque. And sailing through the uh, Great Oyster Bay is one of the most stunning sailings. Anyone who's done it will uh, know what I'm talking about. It's absolutely beautiful down there. Um, as, as well, heading up towards uh, the beautiful sunshine state of Queensland. Can't go wrong. Uh, hitting places like Cairns and Port Douglas, and obviously that's seen the cruising through Willis Island. But our number one selling destination in Australia is New Zealand. Um, New Zealand is just absolutely beautiful. My wife is a Kiwi, so I suppose I'm a little bit biased. Mm -hmm. um, it offers so much. The food is outstanding. The culture is stunning. Uh, and the actual destination itself is just breathtaking. So sailing through the National Fjordland of Doubtful and Milford Sound and places like that, it truly is quite stunning. What I quite like about cruising New Zealand is um, you get to take in both the Southern Island and the North Island. Um, they're very different. The Southern Island really does kind of take more after the kind of British side with places like Christchurch and Dunedin, which is the Celtic name for Edinburgh, Blenheim, all these different kinds of things. You've got Oxford, so on and so forth. Mm. Whereas when you get to the North Island, it's much more Maori. So it's you've got places like uh, Rotorua, uh, you've got the North uh, Bay of Ireland, and it's you get to see that beautiful contrast between the two. Um, anyone who's got a little bit longer on their, uh, on, on their calendar to spend on board, then you can enjoy that 35-night cruise itinerary, which takes in Hawaii, Tahiti, and Bora Bora, which is easily one of the most beautiful places on Earth, and we're the only cruise line which offers that round trip. Um, but like I said, you know, getting down to places like Tasmania, uh, taking in the natural beauty down there, maybe doing a wine tour or something like that, or sailing through the sounds of New Zealand, it genuinely is one of the most breathtaking parts uh, of anywhere in the world. And like you touched on, we are the only cruise line to offer an Australian world cruise. So if you have a third of the year to take on board, um, mm -hmm. then come and join us uh, as we literally sail through, what is it, six continents? We do six continents. The only one we miss out is Antarctica. Uh, 107 nights taken in some of the most iconic destinations and also some of the most beautiful locations. So for our 2023 itinerary, we've got plenty of overnights, namely in Dubai, New York and Kalau, which is uh, the gateway through to Lima. The reason why we do that one in uh, Kalau is so people can get off and they can do our overland shore excursion, get into the top of Machu Picchu, which is a pretty spectacular part of the world. It's taken in some of the most iconic foodie destinations. So if you're a food lover, uh, you've got, you know, Bouya Bays in Marseille. You can enjoy some beautiful carbonara in Rome and also get some poutine in Quebec. So it offers absolutely everything. And to circumnavigate the globe, just literally come on board, unpack once and just let us take care of you. It really is. Uh, you don't actually go to the other side of America, by the way, could it? Oh, was that a question there, sorry? I think it was. I think it was um, that that uh, on this particular voyage, you you cut down through the Panama Canal rather than um, spending any time on the west coast of the US. Yeah, they don't do anything of the Japan or any of that. Yeah, so historically, our, our world cruises tend not to do that. So the the main things that I guess. Are, the, the yes. main kind of bucket list uh, locations but, uh, are doing the two canals. They, they wouldn't go because that's too much for Yeah, but they don't go to Japan either, because if you look at it... They go after Australia. They go to they Australia. Australia. Yeah. They yeah, leave so Australia they... and go through all the... Oh. They don't go to Japan. No, so we don't head up to um, Northeast uh, Asia. Uh, we have offered um, those kind of one-way trips. So if you are interested in sailing from Asia down to Australia, we can do that uh, with our 22-23 season on board the Royal Princess, which is taking in uh, places like Hong Kong and uh, going through the Malacca Straits and all that different kind of stuff. We have also <laughs> offered our Circle Pacific, which okay. goes through that region. You can't do everything. You don't do it. It takes six months to do a lot. <laughs> it would. I mean, if you did everything. Do the north part. 
they don't do that. No, I mean, what, I'm, what I'd love to do is actually do a full circumnavigation of Africa as well, because I think that's iconic. That's really beautiful. Um, the Coral Princess, which does the World Cruise, she's actually one of the environmentally friendly vessels, which is permitted into Antarctica. So I'd love to be able to go down to Antarctica at this time of year as well. But um, I suppose it would actually turn out to be about a year on board then. So uh, I'm not sure if people have got a year. So we have to trim it down a little bit and just hit the hot spots, which are... You know, the two canals, the Suez and the Panama Canal, Europe, North America, and uh, that beautiful part of the western part of South America as well. Mm. Um, but, I mean, like I said earlier, we have just launched our Alaska 2023 programme. Um, just by quick show of hands, because I can see faces. Is anybody done it? Ah, okay. Beautiful. All right. Alaska is... Um, one of the ultimate destinations to visit. It kind of should be on everybody's bucket list because there is no place in the world like Alaska. It is absolutely incredible. It's our number one destination. Historically, we send half of our fleet there. Um, it's a destination that we pride ourselves in, um, in offering it an experience that nobody else can. Now, often when people do this cruise, people will just tend to do an inside passage cruise. So an inside passage is just taking in those ports of call of Skagway, Juneau and Ketchikan. Um, and then doing a round trip from, say, Vancouver, from San Francisco or Seattle. But the thing is, if you're just doing the inside passage part of Alaska here, you're actually only seeing about 7% of the region. It's the equivalent of somebody saying, went to Australia, I love it. And you say, where did you go? Oh, we had a weekend in Canberra. You've not seen so much of Australia. There's so much more to explore. There's so much more to see. I mean, most importantly, you need to get up into Denali National Park and Wrangell St. Elias National Park in the main heart of Alaska to see that wildlife, to see the topography that's there. Now, of course, regardless if you're doing a round trip or if you're doing a cruise tour, which I'll come to, we will also include sailing through places like Glacier Bay. Now, the two must-see, must-do things in Alaska are Denali National Park and Glacier Bay National Park. There in Glacier Bay, you will visit Marjorie. So Marjorie Glacier is the, uh, in the picture there. What's lovely is it doesn't matter if you're on the port side or the starboard side. As you approach Marjorie Glacier, the captain will slowly rotate the ship about three or four times. So you get to enjoy that stunning scenery from the comfort of your own home. And it really is very special. When we visit Glacier Bay, we bring on board the park rangers. You can meet them, you can ask them questions, they give presentations, and even some of them uh, head up to our youth centre and they work with our little ones aged between three and 17, and they get to become a park ranger for the day, learn about the animals. Mm -hmm. It's a really great experience. But what's really important is to make sure that you're getting up into the heart of Alaska, getting up into places like Fairbanks, Denali, Talkeetna, and all those different destinations. Now, to do that, we actually operate our own Glassstone trains. We own and operate our own coaches. Most importantly, we own our own residences. We own five lodges up in Alaska to make sure that you are getting right into the to the heart of this great uh, great land to experience the very best. Now it doesn't matter if you're in an interior or a suite, uh, every single guest whilst on board our train will have um, the up, upper part of the carriage with the glass dome to enjoy the beautiful scenery and then you'll have a dining cart beneath you so everyone gets to experience the same uh, which is wonderful. Once you jump on board you're then going to head up into the wilderness and head up into our lodges. So we've got four main lodges and one, one that we call a hotel. Um, the biggest of them uh, with about 640 rooms is our pre uh, Denali Wilderness Lodge, which is in the northern part of Denali National Park. It is the best way to get into this uh, part of the national park to see the wildlife. So to see bears, to see moose, caribou, wolves, and dull sheep, um, and also maybe even hit the river, go and see the salmon and all those different kinds of things. Mm. Absolutely special. But to make sure we get the most out of that region, we've also got Mount McKinley Lodge, which is based on the southern part of that national park. So you've got two lodges um, basically attacking that Mount Denali, uh, Denali National Park to make sure you kind of pincer in to get the most out of that national park. Now, Mount McKinley um, gives a beautiful viewpoint to see the peak of Mount Denali, which is the tallest peak in North America. Um, it, you can only see it on a clear day, but if you do get a clear day, it is simply jaw dropping. Also at Mount McKinley, we'll have things like dog sledding. We'll have people giving presentations. Uh, and it's also got our tree house, which is a wonderful part as well to enjoy. 
A little bit further outside of that national park, we've got Kenai, which is down in the Kenai Peninsula, nicknamed by the locals as the, uh, the playground of Alaska. Great spot for water sports to go and see glaciers, uh, bears, and all those different kind of things. One of our little hidden gems is Copper River, which is in Wrangell St. Elias National Park, the largest national park in America. What I love about Copper River, if you're starting your land portion after the cruise in Copper River, you will leave the cruise vessel, jump on board a catamaran, and then get up close and personal with a glacier. So you can see that picture there. You will literally be within meters of that glacier, and it really is quite an awe-inspiring experience. Now, obviously, we don't just sail to Alaska. We sail to all seven continents. And we just launched our 2023 program for Europe. Uh, now, Europe is a cruising hotspot because everything in Europe is so close together. You know, to get from Spain to Italy, you can walk. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. So whilst on a cruise ship, you literally come on board, unpack once, and then you can visit six countries in 12 days. It's absolutely spectacular. For our 2023 program, we announced our brand new cruise tour, taking in the best of Greece. Uh, the culture of Greece, the, the history of Greece, the mythology of Greece, the food, everything is um, just an absolute draw. It's a truly special country. So you can see the land portion here, taken in places like Kalambaka, Delphi. Um, you'll, you'll probably know Delphi and Napoleon because it features quite heavily in a lot of Greek mythology. From there, you'll then make your way to Athens, and then you can join a 7, a 14, or 21-night cruise taken in the beautiful Mediterranean. But whilst working on board, I was very, very lucky. Uh, they sent me here, there, and everywhere. They sent me everywhere in the world, apart from Japan and um, Australia, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, quite often, people ask, what's the best cruise that you've ever done? Um, Alaska's close, but by far the best cruise I've ever done is the Baltic. Uh, the Baltic is absolutely unbelievable it's just got so many hidden gems and it takes you by surprise you're not expecting it to be as amazing as it is now if you go to the mediterranean in june july and august it is jam-packed full of tourists there's so many people you know a great example is saint peter's basilica just the basilica itself receives thirty-six thousand people a day so it's absolutely jam-packed with tourists What's lovely about the Baltic is it isn't. You can go in the height of the season and you won't feel like there's loads of tourists and you won't feel like there's loads of people and all the rest of it. You can walk freely. It's incredibly clean. Uh, the food's wonderful and the people are just so friendly. And um, Namely, the overnight in St. Petersburg offers to see destinations like Catherine's Palace. Now, if you do our two-day shore excursion in St. Peters, um, Petersburg, on the first day, we actually get you to Catherine's Palace once it's closed to all, all the guests. You'll then arrive, you'll get some proper Russian vodka, some caviar, some other beautiful uh, Russian tasties. Then we'll get you in the palace for a private tour. And then you will have a private performance from the Russian ballet and the Russian orchestra. It really mm -hmm. is absolutely wonderful. It's quite special. Um, the little hidden gem for me Sorry. is Talon. Oh, that's the other, um, that's the day Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and one of the hidden gems uh, for me as well in the Baltic region is uh, Tallinn. So it's one of those destinations that many people may not be too aware of. It's the capital of Estonia. Um, and they're not quite expecting it to take their breath away the way that, that it does. The old town is literally within what, eight minute walk from the ships. So you just literally walk straight there. And it is just like a fairy tale. Um, if you've ever seen the film Shrek, that famous film Shrek, do you know the land far, far away, the, the fairy tale place? They actually took Tallinn as um, a template to design this fairy tale place. So it's got the cobble street, it's got the old churches, it's got some of the Russian Orthodox churches, um, and it's just like taking a step back in time. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, but obviously, the history of the Vikings. In places like Aarhus, which is in Denmark, it's the second largest city in Denmark. They have the largest example of a Viking ship that's still intact. Um, it was built, I think, about 1300 years ago and was designed to circumnavigate the world. Um, once they finished the design, they got everyone on board, they set sail, and within, I think it was 400 meters of leaving Copenhagen, it sank. It went right to the bottom of the Baltic and it stayed there till the I think it was the 70s. 
They then rediscovered it, they brought it up and they've got it now in a beautiful museum. And it is massive. This thing is absolutely huge. And um, so to see that kind of the glimpse into the history is really wonderful. So the Baltic is definitely my top tip for this part of the world. Mm. I have to say it's a part of the world that I haven't had the pleasure of visiting uh, at, up to now. Um, but I know uh, over the years we've hosted a number of, um, of escorted trips to uh, Northern Europe uh, with Princess. And um, I think people have, as you say, been quite surprised and blown away by just how beautiful it, a part of the world it is. 100%. I mean, obviously, you can tell from my accent, I, I hail from the UK. And working on board, um, I could actually get friends and family to travel with me free of charge. So I very quickly overnight became the favourite child. Uh, <laughs> since I no longer work on board, I don't have that. So now I'm not the favourite child anymore, but that's okay. Um, but whilst uh, working on board the Royal Princess, we're in the Baltic, I managed to get my parents on board. And it's funny, they said the same thing, you know, being in the UK, you can get there so easily, but you wouldn't even really think about travelling there. And as soon as they came on board, they actually booked two holidays um, afterwards to actually see more of the destination because you're just not expecting it to be as incredible as it is. Um, it's definitely a destination that I would recommend to anyone who's never been. So at the moment, David, it, it probably still feels a little far away for, for um, people who might be tuning in today, uh, you know, that concept of being able to get on a, a, an aircraft here in Sydney or in other parts of Australia, fly to Europe and join join a cruise um, out of Copenhagen or out of um, Rome or wherever. But um, I think that that um, we were talking earlier and you you made the comment that we we need to sort of get our bucket lists back out again. And if these are parts of the world that we really are keen to travel to, um, it's important that we start um, uh, sort of investigating and planning and and actually making bookings because otherwise we may very well uh, miss out on on cabins and on um, you know the very best pricing. That's right. Um, I mean, ultimately, cruising for me I think is one of the best experiences that you, you can actually have. And part of that experience is actually the booking process. Mm. You know, choosing where it is in the world that you want to discover, choosing your ship. Um, you know, seeing the high points, choosing your lo location and then having that on, you know, your fridge door, having it in the calendar and having it to look forward to. Now, I know there's so much uncertainty and it kind of creates a little bit of, of angst because we're like, well, can we do that? Can we not? 2023, it's released. Let's get it on the let's get it on the fridge door. Let's have it to look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, let's take that stress point out of it. Um, and as, as we know here, we know for a fact, as soon as we get that return to service, you know, people are going to be booking left, right and centre. Um, and all that pent up demand will be released. What we've actually seen in North America and Europe, because they are cruising, that pent up demand has been released. So just as an example, Alaska for Americans, the demand for Alaska is up 60 percent from what it has been historically. So these things, they genuinely are, they're just selling so fast because we can have an end to cruise. And so because people haven't been able to people cruise. Been so desperate. And they've been saving money. Yeah, so now that, I mean, now that they've got that green line, oh, they're looking yeah, at that. This is the problem. That sorry, sorry, Brian, can I just interrupt? Um, can you pop yourself on mute? Oh, okay. Sorry, if you don't mind, and then that way everyone can still continue to be No problem. Thank you. Thanks. You're all good, Brian. Uh -huh. um, so just what we're seeing that's happened elsewhere in the world, because that they've resumed service, that pent up demand has been released. And places like Europe, I mean, these are all the hotspots, Europe and North America. That's where, you know, the vast majority of cruising actually happens. So mm. what I personally don't want is, you know, is to wait and then to miss out and then have to wait maybe another year you know let's let's kind of lock it in it's always better to have something and maybe not want it in the end than want it and can't get you know we're well outside of any form of risk you know cancellation fees are years down the line so we just it, there's very real, little risk involved it's all about and um, locking in our experience and having something to look forward to and I think, I think that's a really a great point I mean I'm sure that there are um 
more than a couple of people on this call who have had you know perhaps two and or two or three or even more cruises impacted by the pandemic you know bookings that were in place that sadly have either had to be moved forward in the calendar or cancelled completely uh, and of course that means that people um, uh, potentially have future cruise credits with Princess and um, you know perhaps you can talk to just how easy it is for people to apply those credits to new bookings or to bookings for the future. 100% yeah so I mean it's all about choosing the destination that you'd like to book um, and obviously the team at Cruise Express have, have, have got everyone's backs it's not, they make everything nice and easy for you they take any stress out of it um, but if you're unsure how much um, FCC you've got outstanding anything like that uh, the team at Cruise Express they can literally um, see that in our reservation system which they have access to they can let you know they can inform you how much you've got outstanding um, now I know a lot of FCCs at this moment in time um, have a sale by date of 31 December 2022 um, if you want to utilize it for a cruise in 2023 um, just reach out to the team at Cruise Express and they can get in touch with us and we can have a look and see if we can get them applied for 2023 um, you know we are literally we're there to, to assist and to help you um, there's an awful lot of sailings that we've already said that it's absolutely fine to apply to um, we're looking at it on a case-by-case -case process um, I've yet to see one denied uh, because at the end of the day, if you want to come back cruising with us, we want you to come back cruising with us. You know, that's what it's all about. Mm. Now, of course, we can't cover every destination, but you did mention that it won't be long before you um, have programs uh, open for sailing to Japan in 2023 um, and to the Panama Canal and various other um, parts of the world. Um, uh, any idea on how soon that might be, David? for the program launches hmm. yeah so japan's going to go live to sell on the 31st of august uh, for our elite passengers the 1st of september for the general sale then what we're looking at towards november and december is where we're launching our exotics so our exotics are places like panama canal south america the caribbean hawaii we'll also launch canada new england um, and then we'll also launch Asia inclusive from Singapore departures for 2023. So by the end of this year, we will have literally two years worth of cruising uh, available for you to book. Um, I know a lot of people are asking, what about 23, 24 uh, for here in Australia? What about the world cruise for 2024? Mm -hmm. So um, it is coming up soon. We can't share too much, uh, but watch this space. And I would have thought um, you will be made aware of those dates um, in the coming weeks. So um, stand by with that one, but it's um, it's fairly imminent. Fantastic. Now, the other thing is in conjunction with today's information session, you very generously allowed us to, um, to create what we call a cruise sale week. Can you um, explain to people uh, the benefits that that will afford them uh, if they choose to make a booking in the, in the coming days? Of course. So we've, um, that's going to be going live from tomorrow all the way through till the 7th of September. So what that means, any cruise that's seven nights or longer, you get half price deposits um, and an additional $100 on board credit. So it just means that it's less to fork out right now. Um, and I know that some people are going, you know, we're talking about 2023. I don't necessarily want to pay my 20% of the cruise per deposit. By having this cruise sale week, it reduces that risk uh, and that financial output. An additional $100 on board credit, which combines... Uh, with any other features, things like our current campaign, which does end um, at the end of August, um, which gives our guests up to $400 shore excursion credit. So the cruise sale week will combine with that. Um, if you have a future cruise deposit and you can receive up to $150 on board credit, that also combines with this. Um, and if you are an ex-military member, so obviously you get up to $250 on board credit. That will also combine. So what's great about this cruise sale week, it can get you well over $1,000 of potential future cruise uh, of, of on board credit, which you can utilize towards anything other than the casino, really. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so Kathy, we might open up to general questions. Um, 
I, I think I have seen a couple of things popping up in the chat box, but um, uh, while you're looking at that, Kathy, um, one of the things uh, that came, uh, one of the questions that came into us uh, before we went to, um, to air today was just in regard to the ships that we're likely to see back in Australian waters. Um, uh, will we recognise them? Will, they, um, will there be some old faithful familiar ships uh, or are we going to see a bit of a changing of the guard there? Yeah, so it's half and half to... So welcome back the beautiful majestic princess from Sydney. Um, she's one of our Royal class of ships um, featured here. She's a gorgeous ship. Um, absolutely stunning. So part of the Royal class of one of the largest, it is our largest class of vessel. So it has the largest array of dining venues, um, of entertainment venues. Um, it's got such grandeur in that grand piazza. Um, it really is a beautiful ship. So she's coming back to sail from Sydney, from Melbourne. Um, we've had the Golden Princess sailing from Victoria for quite some time now. Now, obviously, she has left our fleet and she's now part of the PO Australia fleet. But we have replaced her with the Grand Princess and she is a sister. So the Golden, the Grand and Star, they're all sister ships. So she will feel extremely familiar to all those that have sailed on board the Golden. We do welcome two new ships, which is the Royal Princess, um, which was the start of our Royal class. Um, I adore that ship. I was lucky enough to be part of the noble team on board that ship. Um, and we've also got sailing from Brisbane, undertaking the world cruise and other longer sailings. We've got the Coral Princess, which has replaced the Sea Princess. Um, now, what I love about the Coral compared to the Sea, um, she's about 25 metres longer. She's about 20 metres taller. She's around 25,000 gross tonnes bigger, but she's got the same passenger capacity. So what that means is you've got more ships, you've got more entertainment space, more dining, um, but you've got the same amount of guests on board. So I know for a fact that people will absolutely adore the Coral. Um, and with our old Sun class of ships, I know a lot of people used to get frustrated because they couldn't get a mini suite or a balcony. The Coral Princess has 100% more suites compared to the Sea Princess, 540% more mini suites. She has 79% more balconies as well. So there is more of that inventory that I know our uh, Australian passengers love. Mm, fantastic. Okay, so I have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one, David, uh, how do you purchase Wi-Fi packages pre-cruise? Perfect, so you can do that whilst becoming ocean ready. So that's all part of the Ocean Medallion class experience. So um, when you become in ocean ready, you can purchase things like uh, shore excursions, spa treatments, you can purchase specialty dining, and also purchase your Wi-Fi package on board. So it's 5G. Um, Previously, if you've ever sailed on board, we used to have minutes. So you could purchase X amount of minutes, but now we've got 5G internet. It doesn't work on minutes. So that's why it's an unlimited internet bundle that you purchase. Okay. And- Can only be on Wi-Fi. Is it available with just Wi-Fi by itself and not with drink packages or anything else? Does Wi-Fi have a standalone package at all, please? Yep. So that's what you just purchase in the Ocean Medallion. I think, uh, oh, so I think potentially what you're talking about is Princess Plus and Princess Saber. So um, so Princess Saber is just our kind of cruise fare, come on board, come and cruise. Um, but for $40 per person per day, you can add the Princess Plus, which includes the um, Ocean Medallion Net Wi-Fi, so the unlimited Wi-Fi and the Premier Beverage Package. If it was just the Wi-Fi package that you're after, then of course you can just purchase that just as a Wi-Fi package, that's absolutely fine. But if you were looking to purchase a beverage package and a Wi-Fi package, you're definitely better off purchasing it as Princess Plus, because like I say, it's only $40. If you were to purchase both of those things separately on board, it would be $120. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, if you just wanted the Wi-Fi, that's absolutely fine. You can purchase that just as a Wi-Fi. What well, if we don't want the drink? It'll be expensive. We just don't need this. There's other questions here in the queue, Bruce. All right. Okay, that's all. Bruce, we can we can um, speak to you offline just to clarify the the options for you. Uh, okay. But most definitely, it's possible to buy the cruise and just add Wi Fi. Just Wi Fi. So you can just add Wi Fi as a package. Okay, I'm just talking about the cost. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. All right. So let's go. We have a look at some of the other questions. Twenty five dollars a day. Sorry, go on, Kathy. No, no, you're right. When will we know if our Around Australia cruise next March will go ahead on Coral Princess? Will we? 
sorry, a couple of questions in this one. Will we be allowed uh, ashore in other states? And will passenger capacity be reduced as I believe it is booked out? It is definitely booked out that one. Uh, many good questions and all of those will be answered in our return to service program. So all of that will be outlined um, from the guidance that we get from government, because obviously that's a, a question at the moment. Right now we've got snap lockdowns, we've got border closures. What would happen if you were on board a ship? And it's a completely valid question. All of these kind of questions are part of our return to service roadmap, which we are working with the government foremost. And um, to answer the first part of that question now, right now, that cruise is going ahead. For all intents and purposes, there's no reason for us to, to think that that cruise isn't going ahead right now. So um, I suppose, I, I think the question was, when will we know if it's going ahead? Uh, yes. I suppose it's the other way around. It's going ahead. Um, should it have to be changed or anything like that, then obviously any of those notifications will happen outside of cancellation penalty. So that's about 180 days before departure. So if it's in March, we're probably looking around November at the latest, really. Okay, um, another one here. Some of these, again, maybe better. We can talk directly offline. When will the Fremantle to Sydney in September? I think it is, yep, little typo. 22 open up. It is currently saying it's unavailable. Yes, um, so, so that's one of our 12 departures that I mentioned earlier that is um, sold out. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do, pop on a wait list. It's $200. If the wait list doesn't clear, then you get your $200 back. If you get a waitlist match, then we can get you on board. Obviously, we may see people wanting to change their itineraries, change their departures, all those different kind of things. Yeah. So if ever in doubt, pop on a waitlist. The team at Cruise Express can obviously help you with all of that. Yeah. We, we've definitely seen great success with that over the years. Um, we, we have a number of clients who just love those one-way cruises. You know, it may be that they have family in WA that they want to go and visit. And then, you know, it's, it's such a lovely way to travel back uh, home by ship rather than um, that very long flight across or, or you know, perhaps you've, you've also previously done the rail journey. So to cruise home is, is really a lovely way of travelling. But um, absolutely, that waitlist um, opportunity is a great one. And we do see um, a lot of success with, with cabins clearing and people being able to, uh, to get on board a little bit closer to sailing time. Sure. Um, David, a couple of questions here I could probably roll in because they're quite specific, but at the moment, cancellations have only, for Australia, um, correct me if I'm wrong, up until mid-December of this year. So we don't know for beyond because a couple of these questions are talking, you know, uh, January, February next year. At this point, they're still sailing. Is that correct? Correct. That's absolutely right, yeah. So right that. now, the government guideline is saying that cruise, cruise lines are not permitted to sail in Australia until the 17th of September. Um, you will notice that many cruise lines have pushed that out till, say, 19 December. We fully expect that ex, uh, extension, the pause extension to happen. We don't know. We, you know, it's at the behest of the government. We've kind of preempted it. Uh, but what we're hoping for is now a, res, a return to service guideline and a roadmap that we can work, work towards. But, yeah. Okay, so I hope that helps for those questions, just generalising it a bit. Can um, I, sorry, Cathy, can I just add that obviously um, we are in constant contact with Princess and if there are any changes to any of the, um, the sailings uh, and if there's uh, updated information about what Princess is, is, um, is doing, we are one of the first agencies to know and we're able to get out to people very, very quickly to let them know what may be happening with their, with their bookings and their cruises. 100%. Okay. 100%. Probably just the last one here for the moment. Um, being an elite member, what benefits do we get now in terms of 5G? We used to get 250 minutes. Yeah, so um, elite passengers, like I say, used to get some minutes on board. Um, with the, uh, the way the medallion net is created, because it's 5G, like I say, it's not based on a minute. It's based on kind of data I suppose so we can't offer that anymore so elite guests uh, and platinum guests can receive a 50% discount on any internet package that they purchase on board but what we've also added by um, kind of not being able to offer that anymore we've also added in a 10% discount on any spa services and for our elite passengers only they also get 10% off their shore excursions so the savings there are massive and also mm -hmm. our platinum and elite guests uh, can access dine my way on the day of deposit rather than final payment, which is what all of the guests 
um, have to do. To find my way is uh, basically the way that you can create, or sorry, not create, curate uh, the way that you dine on board. So if you like to have a set dining time every single day at 6.30, you can set it in for 6.30 every single day. But if you know that a port of call um, doesn't set sail till say 9 p.m. and you won't be getting back till late, it gives you the flexibility to change the dining as you see fit. It also lets you decide how you, uh, how you dine as well. So if you're someone like me, I like to enjoy my dinner. I like to have a glass of wine, a bit of banter, a bit of fun, you know, take a couple of hours to have my dinner. You literally let us know how you like to dine. So if you want to be in and out, just get your food nice and quickly, let us know. And then we can make sure that you're serviced as quickly as possible. Alternatively, you can let us know if you like to graze, let us know where you'd like to sit, all those different kinds of things. It's all about creating how you would like to dine on board and that's dine my way. Um, so like I say, Platinum and Elite Guests have access to that function in uh, the Ocean Medallion Class app at the day of deposit. The rest of our guests do have to wait until final payment. And David, the, um, the military service discount, um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? How do you qualify? What does it entail? Um, what are the benefits? Yeah, so military benefits, uh, to thank anyone who has served in the military, um, they can receive up to $250 on board credit, and that varies depending on the length of sailing, okay? Um, now, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact documentation, and um, I can obviously give that to Meg, and if anybody has any questions, it's available in something we have called OneSource, uh, which the team at Cruise Express have access to, uh, but there is some paperwork that we request, it's just simply just get a scan copy, and you just email our team. And then all we do from that point onwards, against your captain circle number or your kind of fast passenger number, we just literally note that you're ex-military. And from that point onwards, we will automatically just apply that additional onboard credit to any uh, cruise that you book. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Can I just clarify that it's also, you know, people who may be serving in the military at the moment too? A hundred percent. Yes. It's yeah. not just past, it's past and current. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and from um, memory, it is a little while since we've um, had to be applying these sorts of things to bookings, but it's, it's a very straightforward um, uh, process in terms of, you know, scanning simple documents so. and, and sending them through. So that's yeah. all it is. It's just a lovely quick email for you. You know, you can even take a picture of it on your smartphone. As long as you've just got the, we just need, I can't remember the exact certificates. Uh, so I apologize. I couldn't give you the exact names, but a certain kind of um, uh, just kind of certificates which show that you served or are serving um, and then like I say once you've done it once from that point onwards it should just be automated for you. Mm. Now I am uh, conscious that uh, we did say that the uh, session would last for an hour. I think we've just ticked over five o'clock. Um, so Cathy any last questions that might have popped up in the last minute or two? Uh, no, no, I think we're pretty good to go. If anyone does have any questions afterwards you've all got my email address so please do feel free to send me a message and I'll get someone to get back to you if not myself. Um, mm -hmm. if, David yeah. anything else you wanted to close with? Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak to you. Uh, and thank you to all our guests as well. Uh, we genuinely miss you. We really do. Can't wait to welcome you back on board. Um, as part of Carnival Corp, you know, there's 30,000 of us. And um, we, we love what we do. We love getting our guests on board and creating those memories. It, you know, we take it personally. So the last 18 months have been tricky. It's not been easy. But like I said earlier, we are definitely getting there. And I just can't wait to get you back on board and... Sail, uh, sail away from Sydney with a drink in hand, singing some songs and uh, enjoying the, our time on the oceans again. Mm, that will be absolutely amazing. Well, thank you, David, so much for, um, for spending the past hour with us. We really appreciate it. We know that uh, you're a very busy man at the moment. Um, thank you for imparting uh, a whole lot of information and inspiration. It's been uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, like you, we can't wait to be on board again. Um, if nothing else, we're looking forward to some of those little coastal cruises between Brisbane and Sydney or Sydney and Melbourne, and potentially we can um, you know, get those happening with uh, a nice heritage rail journey as well.
Beautiful. And beyond that, you know, looking looking forward to so many other cruising opportunities as well. So um, thank you all very, very much uh, for joining us today. As I did mention, we are recording this session, so we'll be sharing a link with you all um, should you want to watch it back uh, or if you wish to share it with, with family members or friends. Um, stay tuned for other upcoming sessions. Uh, we are working um, on a couple of new uh, subjects that we will be revealing in the coming days uh, and look forward to seeing you online again very, very soon. Um, be sure to let us know if there's a particular topic or if there's a cruise line or a, um, a product that you would like us to feature in more depth and, and we'll do our best to, um, to connect you with, with uh, that information. Um, in the meantime, if there's anything else we can help you with, please don't hesitate to call or email. Uh, we, we very much look forward to uh, assisting you, particularly if you have any questions about upcoming princess voyages. Obviously, we have brochures at hand. Uh, we can link you to a whole lot of digital brochures as well so that you can look at those in the comfort of, of your own home uh, in your own time. Uh, and for now, um, thank you again. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone.